sticky. What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen and you've made it over here to Copper Cactus DIY, my home for all things furniture refinishing, furniture makeovers, and flips. And in today's video, I'm going to be completely restoring this chair and ottoman that's behind and beneath me. <laughs> I'll be using this Lexol product. This is the first time I'm using this and this isn't sponsored or anything like that. I'm just really excited to give this leather a good solid cleaning because I think it's been, oh, forever since that's happened. Sometimes I'll clean it down with just some water and a damp rag, but I've never done anything like leather conditioner before. And then for the wood, my entire plan here, very much keeping this one simple. I just wanna sand off as much of the top coat as I possibly can. But if you're here for the first time, don't forget to click the red button down below and subscribe. And um, feel free to like the video at any old time that you're watching. I really appreciate that. It helps so much for the channel to grow if you do all those clicks and likes and subscribes and stuff. But I think that's gonna be enough rambling for me right now. This intro is probably gonna be way too long. I'm gonna get into this now, and if you guys like seeing furniture restores like this one, then just stay tuned. So like I said, this is the first time I'm trying this product, but it's been around for a really long time, so I'm hoping that it does the job. It does say car interior here, but reading on the box, you can use this on upholstery, so my leather might be slightly soft for this, but we're gonna give it a go anyway and just see. So the first step is to take out the cleaner. Let's just open this box up here, see what we get. So that's the all leather cleaner, step one. Renews, restores, revives. Step two after that's washed down is the conditioner, preserves, prolongs, protects. And you do get a couple of pads in the box too. That's it. But the instructions are right here on the back, so I'm just going to get going with this and uh, yeah. I grabbed my clean, dry microfiber cloth, shook up the Lexol cleaner, removed the pad from the legs for better access, added a generous amount of product to the cloth, and got started scrubbing it into the leather footstool pad. I'm really hopeful that I can do this entire project in a day. Well, I mean, it's doing something, because that's gross. Wow, that does actually help me look cleaner. And then I brought it out here, so that's good. It's, you know, probably should be wearing gloves for this. In fact, I think I'm gonna go get my uh, kitchen gloves. All right, I think that's about as good as this is gonna get. I mean, that definitely did put something on the cloth, so that's good. The next step had me wiping down the piece to remove all the residue. I probably went a little nuts with the cleaner, but I wanted to make sure it was really clean. <laughs> like I said, I dust and I sometimes wipe down this chair, but I've never conditioned it like this before. It took me four wet rags and a lot of scrubbing to get all the soap off of this thing. Okay. I don't know what's in this stuff. But it smells just like uh, 1993. to see the water. It's horrifying. <laughs> okay. Just from the ottoman. Ew. 
I get started on the chair cushion in the same way, but I used a lot less soap on the chair part of this leather. And I wipe things down the same way too. Luckily though, this time it only took me about three cloths to remove all the residue from these three parts. Then I dried each section down with a towel. I grabbed step two, the leather conditioner, and one of the pads that came with the kit. I didn't know how much to use, the container just doesn't really specify, so I kind of started out with a small amount. I buffed it across the surface until everything was coated and I left it to absorb for a few minutes. While that set, I started on the chair and the headrest, doing the same thing with the application. I could tell immediately that it was working. The leather looked clean and much softer than when I started. I tried to persevere through this, but it wasn't getting better. I even tried using the clean pad that came with the kit off camera and that also wasn't working. So off camera, I wiped off the conditioner with a slightly damp rag and that seemed to do the trick. Then it was time to sand the wood. Okay, I'm gonna like throw on my big mask. And I'm gonna use my mouse sander with a 120 grit. I started with the footstool and immediately noticed an issue with my battery. It was a whisper from dead, despite the fact that I haven't actually used this thing in over two weeks. So I went and grabbed the other battery. I knew this one was charged a couple weeks ago, so it definitely should have been full. It started out great, full power, and the 100 grit sanding sheet really cut through the finish, but that lasted about 10 minutes. Yeah, 10. <laughs> After that, I could feel and hear that the battery was winding down. If you've been here a while, you probably saw my desk refinish when I went out and bought these sanders. So to say I'm disappointed that they're dying after only like two projects would be a huge understatement. They weren't the most expensive thing on the market, but they also weren't cheap. I tried to get across the entire piece, but it just wasn't getting through all the finish like it should. And the second battery died before I even completed the footstool. So... I got started as soon as I got back from picking up my new corded sanders. This 80 grit sheet cut through the finish with no problem. I finished up the rest of the chair off camera. I'm not planning to sand the underside of anything unless it's visible. So I cleaned the bottom of the base just so this gunk doesn't end up all over my floor. I 
I'm already in love with this new Black & Decker detail sander. The limitations of the cord reach are totally outshined by the fact it has this small extension attachment for detail sanding. I had some really difficult areas on this chair and the attachment could reach everything. Once I had everything finalized, I went over the raw wood with the detail sander and a 240 grit sheet to smooth down the grain. I wanted a smooth surface to apply top coat and this sander absolutely did the trick. removed all the dust with a damp rag and some water, and that gave me an idea of what the wood would look like if I decided to go with the satin top coat. Unfortunately, the two pieces don't exactly match now. The chair is much lighter in yellow undertoned wood, while the footstool has a slightly red undertone. That helped me decide which top coat to use. To protect this piece, I used my favorite dead flat varnish by Modern Masters. This stuff is great, and if you've been here a while, you saw me use this on the natural wood of my Gossip Bench makeover. An awesome thing about this varnish, it doesn't change the shade of your raw wood. Once it dries, this should look exactly as it did before I put the varnish on. I did two coats, sanded with a super fine grit, and wiped down in between. But with that, my IKEA furniture refresh was complete. Peeps, I'm so glad to be back and working again, and feeling healthy. So if you like furniture refinishing videos, don't forget to subscribe before you peace out. I try to post every week and would love to have you here. Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know how you think this chair and footstool turned out. I'm super psyched with the final results and I would love to hear your opinions too. But that's all I've got for today. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps.